Hey everybody, some of you have asked what an S drive is and what it's used for and I thought I'd do a short video kind of describing its functionality and features. What the S drive Max is, is a floppy drive and tape drive emulator for the original Atari 8-bit computers. All the way from the 400-800s up to all of the most recent 8-bits. Again, it was only for 8 bits. It doesn't include Atari STs of 16 bits. And what it will do is it reads image files, ATR format, ATX, CIS, COM, BIN, EXE, XEX, XFD, TAP, and IMG images. And you store all of those images on an SD card. Of course, you'd transfer them over from your PC over to the SD card and then stick them in the S drive max and it emulates floppy drives, one through four, and a cassette tape drive. If you look, give you a basic overview, the S drive case is a nice form factor case. It's available in multiple colors. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. It's the black and white one. Uh, again, an external power source. This is useful if you want to boot the S drive to one of the older computers, like the Atari 800 I have here. The Atari 800 SIO connection does not provide the 5 volts quick enough to get the S drive booted up before the computer tries to boot to floppy. So if you want to be able to boot to this on the older systems, you must have the external power supply. Uh, USB connection, that's for programming and flashing the ROM inside there. Generally you won't use that unless you're doing a firmware upgrade. We come over to this side, we've got the SIO cable coming out, and then the selector that selects whether it's internal or, ex or external power supply. If the switch is close to the SIO cable, then it will retrieve power from the SIO bus. If it's away from it, it's designed to take it from this external power support. It's a 2.8 inch touchscreen display. And when you look at the screen itself, you've got your list of drives here, D1, T2, D3, D4, D0, tape, and then new and config. And down here is just a cute little blue screen that uh, simulates the Atari screen. So it's ready, you can click on it. Uh, just when you get it, the device is going to look just like this. All of the drive slots are empty. What I generally configure if I'm going to be booting to this drive is I'll come here to D1, and you click on that to select the image, and mine's kind of a mess right now. Generally I have them all in folders and whatnot, but it's kind of a mess because I've been playing around with it. I'm going to come down here to MIDOS, which is 3.08A, and click OK. And now we've assigned that image to D1. If we went ahead and booted the computer now, it would boot to that image, and I'll show you right now. We'll start the Atari, and it is booting, and... We go into DOS, and there's our DOS 3.08A. So it did boot. Now the problem you're going to have is when you turn the power off to this little guy, we'll do it by unplugging it, and plug it back in, those settings are completely lost. We're back to all empties. Now, there's a nice little trick. You can go ahead here and select the image again, do my DOS, hit OK, and then we come down here to config and we're going to save image and save. This saves in the internal flash memory the configuration of the S drive. So when we unplug it again and stick it back in, it's going to start with MIDOS. You'll notice it did go down to D0. That's where it loads the S drive Mac software. So if you boot to D0 like that, shut it off, turn it back on, the computer comes up with the S drive software on the computer and you can move around and select images and could reboot it from that point. That's not really what we want. I kind of like the ability to have it boot up to this DOS every time. So again with that, oops, let's go back here to our my DOS image, select that, that is saved to D1, we'll go back to configuration and we'll do boot to D1, save image and save. Now, when we power down the device and power it back up, you'll notice that it's going to load up my DOS and it's going to have D1 as the active drive. So we can go ahead and just reboot it again and it will boot up to that particular image. Uh, you can assign other you can assign other drives to different files, like let's say, just do a blank image on this one. And you notice when we highlight it, it changes it to D1. So you can make any one of these D1, and it goes in order. 
get that one's D1 and we can come down here, pick another image. Let's pick uh, ball blazer on that one and hit OK. So now we've got all of these images stored on. Let's reboot the computer. You see a little activity light when it is booting. And we're going to come over here to the computer. And we're going to go into DOS. And we can do directories. Do directory of drive one. And we've got just a couple of things on there. That is the my DOS boot. I saved a couple of files. And then let's do a directory of two. <clears throat> and that is our blank disk that we have. Uh, let's do a directory of three. Um, for some reason we're getting an error on that one. I think that image is bad. But as you see there, it loads the image and DOS image just fine. So that's the basic functionality of an S Drive Max. And of course, it does go into screensaver mode here, which is kind of a neat little plus that they've added. And if you want to select tape, you can go ahead and down to tapes. Yeah, let's back up there. You click on the tape. And then we're going to find our tape images. And here's Airwolf and hit OK. And then we could hit start and it would uh, automatically start as if you were hitting play on the Atari 410 tape recorder. So you would boot the computer the way you would boot it if you wanted to boot up a machine language tape drive. Very simple, very easy to use. And of course, if you put other images in here, let's say uh, we want to go back up, we're going to go to games, and let's do Arkanoid, hit that, and then come down here and let's do Asteroids, and hit that. Come down here and do Atari Invaders and hit that. And if we want to save that image, now the next time we reboot this little device, all of those images will be loaded in those particular drive slots. So it does remember the settings you've placed on it for the next time it boots up, which is a handy little feature. So technically you could have this thing auto boot and start a bulletin board or start whatever else you wanted to start on here. So that's the basic overview and features of the S drive. Oh, and one last thing I didn't forget. The SD card slot is right here. Let's take a small SD card in there. I've got 16 gig SD cards that these all come with. So that's the basic overall functionality of the S drive max.